Let's pray. Father, we praise you for truly you are faithful. Lord, we praise you for you are merciful and gracious to us, despite us, in spite of us. Thank you so much, Lord, for this day. Thank you for how you took care of us the past week. Thank you for even, again, allowing us to be here to worship you. Lord, we know that it is only by your grace that we can even be here. And with that, O oh Lord, we praise you and we thank you. Lord, we lift up to you our worship for today. We lift up to you, most especially our hearts. Lord, if not by your grace and your mercy, we cannot even know you. We cannot even go to you. We cannot even fellowship with you. We pray, O oh Lord, again as we worship, as we look into your word, we ask, O oh Lord, that you would just open our eyes, that you would open our hearts, that we would see all the truths that would come only from your word. Again, as we have always prayed, please help us to focus only on you. Please remove anything that would distract us, be it things of work, be it things of our relationships, or even things that distract us because we are not feeling well. Lord, we know that you are the one in control of everything, and even in our health, that you could enable us right now to just focus on you. And we pray for everyone, O oh Lord, who is so distracted right now remind us O oh lord that you have already given us the peace the peace that surpasses all understanding we pray O oh lord that as we look into your word that all the truths that we would see would truly remind us of the grace and privilege that we have already received again O oh lord we submit everything to you I pray, O oh Lord, that I would be faithful only to your word, that you would sustain me throughout the day. And Lord, please hide me behind the cross. As we pray in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's all stand. Let's read and honor God's word. We continue with the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 26 up to 31. I'm reading from the NAS version, so whatever version you have with you, you could follow with me through your own Bibles or through the screen in front. 1 Corinthians 1, 26 up to 31. For consider your calling, brethren, that there were not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. And the base things of the world and the despised God has chosen. The things that are not. So that he may nullify the things that are. But by his doing, you are in Christ Jesus. Who became to us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption, so that just as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. May God bless his holy word. Let's all be seated. Morning, brothers and sisters. Sabi ko nga kanina umagas, we were going here. Siguro mas mabait yung mga tao this week, no? Uh, hopefully not just this week. But anyway, before we go into the passage, no, uh, the passage that we will be covering today is not that the other passages are not important. All of God's Word is so important. But for me personally, when I looked into this, no, oh, napaganun niya ako. Oo nga. Oo nga. Uh, when you were kids, do you like playing games? You like playing games, no? Uh, I don't know what the games you used to play. 
Patintero, no? Yung mga kids dito, wala na. Kasi hawak yung palagi yung phone nyo. You look, you missed a lot, no? Uh, patintero, cops and robbers, no? Or even yan, yung kung saan expert si, ah, saan na si Pastor Pedro? Ayun, jangkal. Uh, by God's grace, si Pastor Pedro. Tapos talaga kung gano'n ka, ano si Pastor, he came from Bacolod and he really, by God's grace, took the time to reach church so that he would be with us today. Sige, Pastor, mamaya. <laughs> well, games, no? Uh, when I was a kid, no, wala pa kasi mga gadgets, no? I would remember, I would remember, like, games like this, no? Kasi you had to choose your team, di ba? Your group, no? I would remember na yung una na napipili is palagi, hindi ako kasama. Hindi ako kasama. Yung, yung supposed na magagaling, yung una na napipili, No? And I can see people nodding, no? Nodding. Why? I don't know. And, and siyempre, when I got married, I had already a son, si Nicolo, no? Uh, they also had games they, when we would bring him to school, no? I don't know. Ano yung mga games? Pepsi 7-Up ba? Or Ice Ice Water, yung mga games nila. Ganon din by groups, no? And I would see again yung mga ibang kids, no? Uh, ganon din kung ano yung tatay niya. Ganoon din, hindi pa rin kaagad napipili yung si Nico kaagad. You know, like father, like son talaga, you know. And you know what? This is how it is really in this world. This is really how it is in this world, no? Uh, una kaagad, no? Kasi ang titingnan kaagad ng world. It's really, siguro, siguro yung mas maabilidad, mas matalino, or maybe mas matindi yung... Uh, social standing, you know, in society. But you know what? In God's economy, in God's economy, it is so, so different. Hence, yung title natin, kinuha ko na hagad sa mismong verse is what? Consider your calling. Consider your calling. And we divide it in two parts. The first division, the unexpected choices, verse 26 up to 29. And the next division, the abundant blessings. From verse 30 up to 31. Let's begin with the first division, the unexpected choices. Verse 26. For consider your calling, brethren, that there were not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble. From the verse, we read the Apostle Paul reminding the Corinthian Christians, the believers, to consider or contemplate on their calling. Consider or contemplate on their calling. Brethren, when we look at the word calling, the word call or calling, I'm sure many here are already familiar with. No? When we study scripture, we would find that there is the word calling and the word elect. Right? The word calling and word elect. Now, the word calling and elect are related, but somehow distinct terms. Related, but somehow distinct terms. The word calling, when we look at this in the Greek and in biblical terms, this is defined generally as what? God's invitation. If you have a concordance, you would find your definition yan in the Greek is God's invitation or summons to salvation. However, even though this is defined as an invitation, this kind of invitation is the kind of invitation that is irresistible. Irresistible. Hence, scholars term this as an effectual call. Or calling. Parang yung call ng may authority. Diba? That you cannot resist. Diba? When the police calls you, stop, hihinto ka. Eh. Diba? Or when the police tells you to come to him, you would respond by obeying. Now, because of this, the word calling is often used to describe the act of God's grace by which God calls and draws individuals to himself to have a relationship with him. So, ito yung salvation, call to salvation. So, that's the word calling. What about the word elect or chosen, as we will see later in the next few verses, which is the favorite doctrine of Pastor George? No? Now, the word elect refers to God's choosing of individuals for a particular purpose or destiny. And specifically, the word elect refers to God's choice of individuals for salvation which is based on God's foreknowledge and sovereign will. So like what we said a while back, while calling and elect are related in that they both involve God's choice and initiative in salvation, they are distinct 
in emphasis. Calling focuses on the invitation and response to God's grace, while elect or even election emphasizes God's sovereign choice for the very purpose of salvation. That is why when the Apostle Paul used the word calling in this verse, the Apostle Paul was like reminding them to closely, closely reflect on the nature of their calling. The nature of their call to salvation which stands in stark contrast to the world's standards of calling. That is based on what? Wisdom, might, and nobility. That is why we read in the verse, For consider your calling, brethren, that there were not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble. Brethren, when the world chooses or calls someone for a specific role, task, or purpose, more often than not, it's based on wisdom, might, and even social status. And the Apostle Paul says that in God's economy, this was not so. That is why the Apostle Paul reminds them to what? Consider or contemplate on their calling. Consider or contemplate on their calling. Again, the context, the background ng chapter po na ito, yung previous na mga messages and preachings diba, from kila Pastor Pedro, dun kila Brother Josh, diba? what was happening? Immediately, the Apostle Paul was what? Addressing the problem of divisions in the church. Diba? Divisions. Sabi nga ni uh, Brother Ian, diba? may mer- merong mga, ano na yan? mga Ianatics. Diba? <laughs> Hala nyo, porkit wala kami rito, hindi namin alam, pinanood namin, no? Uh, I don't know, ano pa yung mga ginamit na ibang terms. No? They were mga divisions. They were siding to this and to that, no? And hindi lang yon. as what was preached the following, uh, the following week, they were also divided in terms of philosophies. Philosophy, sabi nga ni Pastor George nung elders meeting, si Apollos kasi medyo matalino, medyo magaling. So there were factions. And anang nangyari? Because of those divisions, those factions, no? na mayroong mga ibang groups sa matatalino, full with wisdom, pero Christians yun, ha? Christians yung mga nando sa church na yun. There were those who were alienated. Alienated. So, mayroong mga tinatawag nga na binanggit din ni, Pastor, ni Brother Josh, clicks. May mga clicks. That is why, that is why, mga kapatid, no? Like what the Apostle Paul said to the Corinthian Christians. Uh, have we ever really done this? What? Really just assess and contemplate on our calling. Assess and contemplate on our calling. If we say we are true Christians, have we really contemplated as to why we were called? Why? Why do you think were we called? If not, if not, if not really this week is the best time for us to really contemplate especially after we go through this message. So from the verse, we see the Apostle Paul highlighting how different the way God calls. Highlighting how God calls and chooses those people whom He draws to Himself. The Apostle Paul first says that there were not many wise according to the flesh. Now this phrase, not many wise according to the flesh, speaks about what? Worldly or human wisdom, which is based on human intellect, reasoning, and even philosophy. And in Paul's day, this kind of wisdom was highly valued by the Greeks. The Greeks esteemed wisdom as seen in their philosophers like Plato and Aristotle. The Apostle Paul also mentions what? The word mighty, which refers to strength or power. Now, this could be talking about physical power, But for sure, when the Apostle Paul wrote this, this also speaks about that kind of power pertaining to influence or even like political power. Again, the Corinthians were familiar with this kind of power for they lived in a culture that admired physical prowess and political and military might. Furthermore, the Apostle Paul also wrote the word noble that can be translated also as what? Well-born or high-born, which refers to those man of noble birth or high social standing. 
Again, the Corinthians, yung Corinthians Christians, no, like many in the ancient world and even today, respected and honored those of noble descent. And interestingly, these standards of wisdom, strength, and nobility were not how God called and chose Christians. The Apostle Paul was making it clear that this was not God's way when he calls and chooses. Brethren, when we also consider this today, among the believers, specifically dito muna, sa local church ng GFC here in Montenlupa, when we just look around, but don't do that, okay? Don't do that. Maybe with the exception of Pastor Pedro and Brother Joss, I'd say, mabawi ako sa'yo eh. <laughs> no, just, just kidding, you know? Not many came from such backgrounds of wisdom, strength, and nobility. That is why when the Apostle Paul wrote this, the Apostle Paul was emphasizing that God's way of calling and choosing is so different from the world standards which prioritize human wisdom, power, and status. God's criteria for calling and choosing are based on His what? own wisdom and purpose. And just to note po ha, the Apostle Paul's use of the phrase not many, not many, communicates the truth that there were some among the Christians in Corinth who did possess worldly wisdom, might, and nobility. Okay, meron pa rin. Okay, meron. However, the emphasis is on the fact that these were exceptions rather than the norm. And also this po. Paul's purpose in highlighting the Corinthians' lack of worldly status was not to belittle them. Okay, hindi minamaliit ni Apostle Paul sila, but rather to remind them and even us today of the nature of their calling and the basis of their identity in the Lord Jesus Christ. By recognizing their own limitations and weaknesses, they and also we today can better appreciate the surpassing greatness of God's grace and power at work in us. Brothers and sisters, think about this, no? Pag-isipan po natin. Why among the millions here in Montinlupa, Paranaque, and even Las Piñas? Bakit po tayo? Why us kaya? God who could have chosen, di ba, si ganyan, si ganon, yung kapitbahay nyo, yung kaibigan nyo. And yet, by God's grace, we are here today. Why kaya? Brothers and sisters, though, this should not be a cause of division in the church. Wala dapat small churches within the bigger church. I hope malinaw po sa atin yun, ha? Wala dapat small churches within the church all because we think we are different. We are one body in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, if God's criteria for calling and choosing was not based on this, how or even who did God call and choose? Let's now look at the next verse. Verse 27, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. So from the verse, we now read from the Apostle Paul continuing his discussion on the nature of God's choosing. We first see the word but, which highlights the difference between the two ideas. Pinagkumpira. Yung pag-choose ng world and yung pag-choose ni God. The phrase God has chosen, when we look into this closely, like what we said a while back, this word emphasizes God's sovereign selection. The verb chosen conveys the idea of a deliberate, and purposeful choosing. For the ga- grammar Greeks out there, yung mga grammar geeks, yung mga uh, magagaling po sa English, no? this word choosing is in the middle voice. Parang yung sinabi ni Josh last week. In the middle voice. Ano ibig sabihin po no, ng middle voice? This indicates that God Himself is the one performing the action of choosing. 
Walang nag-influence sa kanya. It is God Himself performing the action of choosing. And because of this, this emphasizes the fact that God's choice is not some random or whimsical choice. But it is based on His divine wisdom and purpose. Now, the words foolish things, this refers to things that are considered foolish or lacking in wisdom by the world's standards. By implication, this could include people who are regarded as foolish or actions that seem foolish in the eyes of the world. And as the verse says, God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And to further emphasize the truth the Apostle Paul was teaching, the Apostle Paul also wrote, God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. Brethren, not only did God choose the foolish things of the world, but God also chose the weak things, which refers to those who are what? Those who are considered weak or lacking in strength. And this could include individuals who are physically, emotionally, or even socially weak as well as actions that seem powerless in the world's eyes. And like what the verse says, these two are those that God also chose. Why? As the verse says, to shame the wise and to shame the things which are strong. So, what do we learn from this? Brothers and sisters, from the verse, we learn that God's purpose of choosing was really to shame the wisdom and strength and influence of the world. You know what? Most scholars say that the Corinthian church, strong chance, marami ang what? Slaves. Marami ang slaves. And dahil slaves sila na nasaved, or more often than not, these slaves who were what? They were so simple. They were so simple. So simple, even though they were slaves, sila pala yung most likely Christ-like, simple and humble. Ironically, the wise during that time, yung mga Pharisees, di ba? What happened to them? They didn't recognize the Lord Jesus. Sila yung wise, ah. sila yung knowledgeable. And in our world today, when we bring it to our time today, supposedly, yung wise, rich, influential, they are the ones exalted by the world, not by God. And yung mga wise, rich, and influential, not all, ah, sila pa yung malayo kay Lord Jesus. So far from the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet, yun yung hinahangaan ng mga tagamundo. Sadly, because of this, no, sila yung hinahangaan, sila yung magaling mag-gaslight. Are you familiar with that? Gaslighting, yung mga mali, ginagawang tama. No? Tragically, nag-gaslight pati tayong mga Christians. Di ba? Let me give you an example. If you look at social media, yung arrogance ngayon, arrogance, niridefine na as what? To inspire. Wow! I'm so ano sa ganon, yung, ano, yung arrogance. They are already saying, this is to inspire. And sadly, we see this also among Christians. Brothers and sisters, we are not to be conformed to the world, but be transformed to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. Sabi nga namin nung elders meeting, paano masya-shame on world? By God. We Christians should be the what? The salt and light in this dark world. And you know what? If we obey this, God promises what? They will be shamed. How? God definitely knows how. I don't know specifically, but definitely God knows how. Kaya nga, brothers and sisters, no, we have to understand this truth. We have to understand it. And you know what? This concept of God using the foolish and weak things to shame the wise and strong is so consistent with other biblical teachings. It is consistent. Sabi nga kanina sa Kids of Grace, teacher Aaron ano, gave the example of what? Who? I'm sure you know. David. The youngest and least likely to 
be chosen. Siya yung youngest ni Jesse's son. Eh, pero siya yung pinili to be king over Israel. Di ba? He's so puny. He defeated who? Goliath, di ba? And sabi nga nung men of the word the other night, si Brother Carlo naman, sayang yung mga men na wala dito, no? Ganda ng turo ni Brother Carlo. Sino yung diniska? Si Gideon. Si Gideon. God chose Gideon. And yet, with Gideon's leading, tinalo niya yung how many, Brother Carlo? 32,000 ba? Basta marami. Well, the truth being spoken here, we will see and understand better. Kaya nga, if we really think about it, God often works through the weak to accomplish His purposes. And God does this to de- truly demonstrate His grace, wisdom, and power in ways we could never imagine. Mas nagagamit ni God tayo, even us Christians, when we recognize that we are truly weak. Kaya nga, how are we so far? How are we so far? If we say that we are true Christians, then God chose us despite us, in spite us being like this. Question is, how do we respond to that? How do we respond to that? Like what we said kanina, God could have chosen someone else instead of us. So what are we doing? What are we doing here in our church setting? May onti ba ba tayong yabang that we try to elevate ourselves sa ibang mga Christians at dahil doon nagiging hindrance tayo sa work ni God? Yung pagiging medyo inaangat natin sa sarili natin, are we causing already divisions? Or, let's look at the extreme. Are we that Christian naman na mayroon defeatist mentality? Ano yung defeatist mentality? Sabi, Ay, wala akong skill, wala akong ano. Eh, hindi ako magagamit ni God. Ito lang kasi talaga ako. How are we, brothers and sisters? And it didn't end there. The Apostle Paul proceeds by saying, verse 28, And the base things of the world, and the despised God has chosen, the things that are not, so that He may nullify the things that are. From the verse we now read, the Apostle Paul further stressing God's counterintuitive and unconventional method of choosing individuals. We see the Apostle Paul adding from what he just previously said. He adds in highlights that God chooses not only the foolish and weak, but also the base things of the world. Now, the base things, this refers to things that are lowly or of little value in the eyes of the world. And this could include individuals who are socially marginalized and even considered insignificant by the world. And it didn't end there. As if hindi pa sobrang tindi ng sinabi niya, na mga mambababa. Yung sinabi sa Tagalog kasi na yun, mga mambababa. The Apostle Paul also wrote the word despised. And the word despised, pag tinignan nyo sa translation na Tagalog, mga hinamak. This communicates the idea of being what? Rejected or treated as worthless. And interestingly, Paul says that God also chooses them. The despised or those looked down upon the world. And again, hindi pa po doon nagtapos. The Apostle Paul also wrote that God chose also who? The things that are not. Ang ganda nito sa salin sa Tagalog, mga bagay na walang halaga. Which again further emphasizes the insignificance of the things that God chooses. Brothers and sisters, all of this that was written truly highlights the contrast between God's perspective and the world's. What the world considers non-existent or worthless, God values and chooses for His own glory. Ang galing ng pagkakasulat dito ni Apostle Paul, di ba? Bakit ang galing? Patindi ng patindi yung pagiging what? Insignificant na pinipili ni Lord. Let's now ask, analyze, where do you think do we belong? Where do we belong sa category na yon? If may konti pa tayong onting yabang, thinking na medyo angat tayo sa iba, 
iniisip natin na dahil dun kaya tayo nandito, you know what? Mali po tayo. Nagkakamali po tayo. Kaya nga, wag naman po tayo, Christians, mga kapatid, wag naman tayo masyadong magbida-bida as if alam po natin that we overpower other Christians. How about this? If we think naman of ourselves so low that God has no use of us, that we just say, ano, sila na lang. You know what? Let's not be dependent on others. But we have to be dependent solely on God. Diba? We see this also in the church, diba? nakakalungkot, na don't want to be part of any ministry kasi sabi kasi ito lang ako eh. Ito lang ako, hindi ako magagamit ni Lord dito. You know what? Pinili at tinawag po tayo ni Lord. God will for sure use us for His work in His church. May reason and use tayo sa church. All of us, kung sinasabi natin totoo tayong Christian, all of us mayroong use at purpose sa church. And it is all because of God's grace. God was the one who chose us and called us. And because of that, what do you think should be our proper response? So, as the Apostle Paul said this, the Apostle Paul proceeds by giving the reason as to why God this. But niya ginawa ito? Why God did this? The verse says, so that He may nullify the things that are. Brethren, we see here the first reason as to why God did this, so that He may nullify the things that are. Yung word na nullify, this communicates the truth of rendering something inactive or ineffective. That is why from what the Apostle Paul wrote, clearly we see that the things the world values, such as wisdom, strength, and social status, are ultimately powerless and ineffective apart from God. Kahit anong talino natin, kahit anong yaman natin, kahit anong galing natin apart from God, Sabi ng scripture, you will be nullified. Ito yung totoong ano. You will be cancelled by God Himself. Di ba? daming mga nagka-cancel ngayon. Ha, sige, o ito, post natin ito. Hindi, huwag gagawin yun, ha? And that is the most scary thing, to be cancelled by God for eternity. Kung hindi ka man ishame sa life na to, in eternity, you will be shamed, nullified. That is why if you really think about it, targeting just a specific group for ministry in church settings, targeting mo lang, influencers, that's not God's way. It is not God's way. Dapat sabay-sabay, dapat balanced ang ministry, yung work ni God. Ang magsiseparate lang sa atin, not demographics, language. Di ba? Praise God, by God's grace, we have a missions group. Praise report lang naman. We have a Bible study for kids and adults in small communities in the area. Now, we praise God, yung mga missionary natin dito. Baka hindi nyo kasi alam eh, di ba? Not to elevate them para ano, but all because of God's glory. Di ba? Sila Ian, sila Eric, sila Gerald. Kasama na rin si Yan Yan, ba? Nandun dun sila. And we have already also started not just for kids na Bible study, meron na rin tayong adults. And we're praying na, um, iniisip ko, but kami pinadala sa Shepcon, di ba? You know what, pagdating dun, ang unang sinabi ko dun sa mga kasama ko, you know what, let's pray na magawa natin ito locally for the small community churches. We're praying. Please help us pray for that. Bakit mga kapatid? We live in a culture that values status, wealth, and power. And by highlighting God's choice of the lowly and despised, the Apostle Paul challenges the Corinthian Christians before and also the Christians today to really evaluate our values and priorities with regards to our Christianity. We have to really reevaluate. 
Kaya nga, ganun yung sinasabi ni Apostle Paul, consider your calling sa kanila noon and even to us today. The Apostle Paul proceeds by saying, so that no one may boast before God. From the verse, we first read the word so that. The phrase so that communicates the truth of the ultimate result or outcome of God's choosing. And when the Apostle Paul wrote this, the Apostle Paul's goal is to emphasize that God's choice is intentional and has a specific purpose in mind. And what's the purpose? So that no man may boast before God. Brethren, from this verse, we see the truth that God's choosing is designed to eliminate human boasting. Like what we already know, the word na boast means to brag or to boast about one's own accomplishments or attributes. Paul was again highlighting that God's choice is not based on human merit or worthiness, but solely on His grace and purpose. That is why, by choosing the foolish, weak, base, despised, non-existent things of this world, God ensures that no one can boast before Him. This highlights the fact that salvation is entirely God's work and is based on His grace alone. As Ephesians 2 verse 8 to 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. That is why. To those here, who still think that they know better than God through His Word. Now is the best time to really pause, evaluate, and pray. If you still have not submitted to the Lord's authority, if we have not yet, you have not submitted to the Lord as your magiging Savior mo, why? God's Word says that for all have sinned. We have all sinned. And the payment and the wages of sin is death. It is only through the Lord Jesus Christ that we can be saved. Unless we truly see that. If we see, see ourselves, na kaya naman natin siguro isave ang sarili na kasi mabait ako, naggaganito ako, ganon, no? Then you will never ever turn to the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Pwede mo sabihin, Lord, pero not as Savior. Pray about it. Baka maamiya, wag naman mangyari if you are here sitting on this pulpit week by week by week and yet you still reject no matter how young you are. You know what? Sabi ng scripture, you will be nullified. You will be canceled by God. Kaya nga, what can we pray? What can we pray that as we truly consider, contemplate on our calling, that our response would really be God-honoring? We go to the second division, the abundant blessings. Verse 30, by, by His doing you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. From the verse, we now see the Apostle Paul detailing the unimaginable blessings and privileges we receive all because of what God did. The Apostle Paul first says that by His doing, meaning God's doing, the Corinthian Christians were in what? Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, this verse simply tells us that the source, that the source of the Corinthian believer's salvation is all because of God. All because of God. Their union with Christ Jesus is entirely the work of God. Hence, we read by His doing. Now, the words in Christ Jesus focuses on the truth, on the believer's union with the Lord Jesus Christ. And this union by grace is a spiritual reality in which believers are united with Christ in His death and resurrection. And it is through this union that believers receive the benefits and blessings of salvation, which the Apostle Paul enumerated in this very verse. Kung iisipin natin, kota na tayo po sa salvation natin, and yet hindi pa ho doon nagtapos. All by His doing. The Apostle Paul enumerated in this verse, ano yung sinabi niya? The Apostle Paul first says that the Lord Jesus became to them as wisdom from God. Brethren, in Christ, by God's grace, 
believers find true wisdom. True wisdom which is not based on human reasoning or philosophy, but on the revelation of God through His Word. Diba sabi nga ng scripture, the Lord Jesus is the truth. And God promises that. Once we are saved, we will really know the truth. We will have the wisdom as we spend much time in His Word. And hindi nagtapos doon. The Apostle Paul also says, the Lord Jesus Christ also became to us as what? Righteousness. And this highlights the fact that in the Lord Jesus Christ, believers are declared righteous before God. And this righteousness, again, is not based on our own actions or merit, but on the perfect righteousness of the Lord Jesus imputed on us. Ano yung imputed? Binigay natin yung sinfulness natin kay Christ, binigay sa atin yung righteousness niya sa atin. Imputed on us. In God's eyes, we are already by God's grace righteous. So that's the second. Here's the next blessing. Christ also became to us a sanctification. Sanctification refers to the process by which believers are made holy or set apart for God's purposes. In Christ, believers are sanctified positionally, meaning that we are set apart as holy in God's sight immediately upon salvation. Kung hindi pa natin naintindihan ang sanctification, we are set apart. If the Lord Jesus is truly your Lord and Savior, in God's eyes, you are already set apart for Him, automatically, positionally righteous ka na, sanctified ka niya. And hindi nagtatapos doon. We are also sanctified progressively as we grow in holiness and conformity to the Lord Jesus Christ. Ano ibig sabihin na yun? True Christians become more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ. Yun ang sanctification. That's the third blessing. And hindi pa nagtapos noon. Lastly, the Lord Jesus Christ became to us as redemption. Redemption refers to the act of what? Buying back or being set free. In Christ, believers are redeemed from the power and penalty of sin. Christ's death on the cross paid the price for our sin, setting us free from its bondage. Wala na pong control sa atin ang sin. Brothers and sisters, all these, all these blessings, all these privileges was only by His doing alone. And because of this, we read in verse 31, the Apostle Paul saying, So that, just as it is written, let him who boast, boast in the Lord. Because of all that was said, we now read from the Apostle Paul concluding his discussion on the topic of God's calling and choosing. And the Apostle Paul did this by quoting from the Old Testament. Ano yun? Yung kaninang scripture reading, Jeremiah 9, 23-24. We read from what the Apostle Paul wrote, Paul reiterating that the purpose of God's choosing was to eliminate any human boasting. And most importantly, to redirect all glory solely unto God. All glory is for God alone. That is why when the Apostle Paul quoted from Jeremiah, Paul was emphasizing the truth that true boasting should only be in the Lord. Ang lahat ng ito dahil lamang po kay Lord. And when we look at the context, when the prophet Jeremiah said this, we would see that Jeremiah's words was a warning against boasting in one's wisdom, might, or riches. Jeremiah, when he wrote this, was instead emphasizing that those who boast, ano yung sinabi dun sa verse 24, should boast only in knowing the Lord and understanding the Lord. That is why by quoting from the Old Testament, the Apostle Paul was highlighting what? The continuity between the Old and New Testament, which focuses on the timeless truth that true boasting should always only be in the Lord. Everything is only all by His grace. Our wisdom, yung alam po natin ngayon, things that we learn, things that we know, only came from the Lord. Pag meron tayong ibang Christian, younger Christian, hindi, not even in our own thoughts, huwag natin sasabihin, bakit hindi mo alam yan? Theophany. Di ba? May mga mabibigat naman. Madalas dati pag, 
Ano yun? Tahimik lang ako eh. Hindi ko alam yun. Ano yun? Buti ngayon, meron ng Google eh. Yeah? Wisdom. <laughs> Righteousness. O, oh, di ba tayo mga, mga holy sabi mo, bakit mo nagagawa yan? Not that we are tolerating sin, no? No, we are not. Pero, we are not to condemn people kaagad. We don't cancel people. Kasi bakit? Yung righteous natin, inimpute lang sa atin eh. Set apart. Ano yung set apart? Uy, Christian na ko eh. Kayo. Di ba? Di ba? Parang, uh, makakakita tayo mga Christian. Yung mga yan, hindi mga Christian. Grabe oh. Wow. If not by His grace, di ba? Kaya nga, brothers and sisters, no? Ano yung isa pa dito? Di ba yung redemption? We have already triumphed over sin by His grace. Minsan, mga counseling natin, yung mga nangyayari, di ba? Kung nari, may kasalanan yung isa. Sabi, bakit mo struggle yan? Alam mo, hindi ganyan. Ganito gawin mo, ganito gawin mo. Lahat ng binibigay na advice, nando doon, wala sa word ni God. Brothers and sisters, for sure, when the Apostle Paul wrote all of this, the Corinthian believers back then, yung mga Christians, those who would receive this would be challenged to really have a deep check and assessment of their hearts. And this should go the same with us. We have to really consider our calling. We have to contemplate. And you know what? Because of all of this, They should really cultivate in us what? Sabi nga doon sa elders meeting, yung una sinabi ko, humility. Buti na lang, kasama ko sila, Pastor Dennis, Pastor Pedro, saka si Pastor George, sa mga wise, noble, no? Sabi nila, let's not forget to be what? Ang pinaka-importante also, to be thankful. To be thankful. And you know what? Dapat makikita po ito sa mga buhay po natin. Have we really considered our calling? It's so easy kasi to say, yes, by God's grace, I am saved. I'm a saved sinner. But really, does it really reflect? Makikita po ba ito sa mga buhay natin? This should be really the center of our life. Kung ano ang sinasabi ni God. Yun ang center natin. Hindi siya ang number one, hindi siya ang priority lang. No, dapat umiikot lahat doon ang buhay natin. Di ba parang pinag-aaralan ko ata, sabi ko, mahiya-hiya ka na talaga, Rico, kung hindi ka pa magtino. Di ba? Ang dami naman pwedeng tinawag ni God eh. But sabi ko, why me? And you know what, brothers and sisters, all of this, considering our calling, so that God alone will receive all the glory. Let's spend a minute or two to really just reflect on all the truths that we just learned. Let's all pray. Father, we truly praise you for you are so gracious to us. Thank you so much, Lord, for allowing us to worship today. We pray, O Lord, that as we learned all the truths that came only from your word, that this would truly reflect not just today, but the rest of the week. Keep us safe, O Lord, throughout the week. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And this we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Have a blessed week, brothers.